learning objectives after studying this chapter you should be able to state the meaning and importance of management principles understand the nature and significance of principles of management explain taylor's principles and techniques of scientific management describe henry fiol's contribution to modern management analyze fiol's principles of management introduction to management principles each and every system around the world run on certain principles and guidelines in an organizational setup these principles serve as the route map to run its vision and activities management is also based on certain principles which serve as a guideline for business management principles a managerial principle is a broad and general guideline for decision making and behavior in order to have a clear idea regarding the term principles of management first we should understand the underlying terms in it viz principles and management principles principles are the fundamental norms rules or values that represent what is desirable and positive for a person or a group or community and help it in determining the rightfulness or wrongfulness of its actions principles are more basic than policy and objectives and are meant to govern both management Management is the group activity which involves planning, organizing, directing and controlling the human activities towards the attainment of organizational goals. Principles of management. It is the combination of principles and management. That is, it is the set of fundamental norms, rules or regulations which controls and guides the activities. of management in its functioning evolution of management principles management principles are derived in a systematic order through the years the first known management ideas were recorded in 3000 to 4000 bc gradually it paved the way for classical and neoclassical management theories in 1900th century In recent years management theories has opened new ways for different approaches like management science approach operation research and modern management nature of principles of management principles are general propositions which are applicable when certain conditions are present the important points that describe the nature of management principles are listed below universal applicability the principles of management are intended to apply to all types of organizations business as well as non business small as well large public sector as well as private sector manufacturing as well as the services sector general guidelines The principles are guidelines to action but do not provide ready-made straight-jacket solutions to all managerial problems. This is so because real business situations are very complex and dynamic and are a result of many factors formed by practice and experimentation. The principles of management are formed by experience and collective wisdom of managers as well as experimentation this principle finds mention in management theory on the other hand in order to remedy the problem of fatigue of workers in the factory an experiment may be conducted to see the effect of improvement of physical conditions to reduce stress flexible 
The principles of management are not rigid prescriptions which have to be followed absolutely. They are flexible and can be modified by the manager when the situation so demands. They give the manager enough discretion to do so. Behavioral in nature. Management principles aims at influencing behavior of human beings. Therefore, principles of management are mainly behavioral in nature. Cause and effect relationships. The principles of management are intended to establish relationship between cause and effect. As such, they tell us if a particular principle was applied in a particular situation, what would be its likely effect? Significance of Principles of Management Management principles provide useful insights to managerial behavior and influence managerial practices. The significance of principles of management can be discussed in terms of the following points. Providing managers with useful insights into reality. The principles of management provide the managers with useful insights into real-world situations. Adherence to these principles will add to their knowledge, ability and understanding of managerial situations and circumstances, optimum utilization of resources and effective administration. Resources both human and material available with the company is limited. They have to put to optimum use. Principles equip the managers to foresee the cause and affect relationships of their decisions and actions. Scientific decisions. Decisions must be based on facts, thoughtful and justifiable in terms of the intended purposes. They must be timely, realistic and subject to measurement and evaluation. Management principles help in thoughtful decision making, meeting changing environment requirements. Although the principles are in the nature of general guidelines, but they are not modified and as such help managers to meet changing requirements of the environment. Management principles are flexible to adapt to dynamic business environment. Fulfilling social responsibility. The increased awareness of the public forces businesses, especially limited companies, to fulfill their social responsibilities. Management theory and management principles have also evolved in response to these demands. Management training, education and research. Principles of management are at the core of management theory. As such, these are used as a basis for management training, education and research. These principles provide basic groundwork for the development of management as a discipline. Taylor's Scientific Management Scientific Management Scientific Management refers to an important stream of one of the earlier schools of management thought called classical thought. Before discussing the management principles, let us go through the working atmosphere of factories in the earlier years of industrial revolution. Lack of professionalism and personal judgment leads to an autocratic atmosphere in the factories. In this scenario, F. W. Taylor emerged as the father of scientific management. He proposed scientific management as opposed to rule of thumb. He broke up human activity into small parts and found out how it could be done effectively in less time and with increased productivity. F. W. Taylor, the father of scientific management. Frederick Winslow Taylor was an American mechanical engineer 
who sought to improve industrial efficiency. In 1874, he started his career as an apprentice mechanist and later became the president of American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Taylor thought that scientific analysis of the work would be the best way to do it and to increase productivity. In 1911, he published his findings as the principles of scientific management and which is considered as one of the greatest contributions in the management history. F. W. Taylor Important Incidents in Life 1856, March 20th Born at Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, United States 1874, started his career as an apprentice mechanist 1883, graduated from Stevens Institute of Technology in Mechanical Engineering 1884, executive at Midville Steel Company 1895, introduction of peace rate system 1898, joined with Bethlehem Iron Company 1900, professor at Tuck School of Business 1902, Elliott Crescent Medal 1906, President of American Society of Mechanical Engineers 1911, Publishing of the Principles of Scientific Management 1915, March 21st, Death Principles of Scientific Management F. W. Taylor has developed four different principles of management which is later accepted as scientific principles of management. Science, not rule of thumb. Taylor believed that there was only one best method to maximize efficiency. This method can be developed through study and analysis. Taylor advocated the scientific method of approaching the problems which involves investigation of traditional methods through work study, unifying the best practices and developing a standard method which would be followed throughout the organization. Harmony not discord. He emphasized that there should be complete harmony between the management and workers. Both should realize that each one is important. To achieve this state, Taylor called for complete mental revolution on the part of both management and workers. Management should share the gains of the company, if any, with the workers. Development of each and every person to his or her greatest efficiency and prosperity. Industrial efficiency depends to a large extent on personal competencies. Hence, as per this principle, each worker in the organization should be well trained so as to complete his job effectively. Worker training was essential also to learn the best method developed as consequence of the scientific approach. Cooperation, not individualism. There should be complete cooperation between the labor and the management instead of individualism. This principle is an extension of principle of harmony, not discord. According to him, competition should be replaced with cooperation. Techniques of Scientific Management F. W. Taylor suggested the following methods and techniques instead of the rule of thumb for the smooth running of a business enterprise. Later, it will be accepted as the techniques of scientific management. Functional foremanship. In the factory system, the foreman represents the managerial figure with whom the workers are in face-to-face -face contact on a daily basis. He is the pivot around whom revolves the entire production planning, implementation 
and control. Thus, Taylor concentrated on improving the performance of this role in the factory setup. In fact, he identified a list of qualities of a good foreman or supervisor and found that no single person could fit them all. He suggested functional foremanship through eight persons. Under the factory manager, there is a planning and production in charge, standardization and simplification of work. Standardization refers to the process of setting standards for every business activity. It will be standardized of process, raw material, time, product, machinery, methods or working conditions. These standards are the benchmarks which must be adhered to during production. Method study The objective of method study is to find out one best way of doing the job. There are various methods of doing the job. To determine the best way, there are several parameters. Right from procurement of raw materials till the final product is delivered to the customer every activity is part of method study. Taylor devised the concept of assembly line by using method study. Example, Ford Motor Company used this concept very successfully. Techniques of Scientific Management Motion Study Motion study refers to the study of movements like lifting, putting objects, sitting and changing positions etc which are undertaken while doing a typical job. Unnecessary movements are sought to be eliminated so that it takes less time to complete the job efficiently. For example, Taylor and his associate Frank Gilbert were able to reduce motions in brick layering from 18 to just 5. Taylor demonstrated that productivity increased to about four times by this process. Time study It determines the standard time taken to perform a well-defined job. Time measuring devices are used for each element of task. The objective of time study is to determine the number of workers to be employed frame suitable incentive schemes and determine labor costs. Fatigue study A person is bound to feel tired physically and mentally if she or he does not rest while working. The rest intervals will help one to regain stamina and work again with the same capacity. This will result in increased productivity. Fatigue study seeks to determine the amount and frequency of rest intervals in completing a task. Differential piece of wedge system. Under this system, the workers can then be classified as efficient or inefficient on the basis of set standards. Most efficient workers will be rewarded more so he introduced different rate of wage payment for those who performed above standard and for those who performed below standard. Henry Fuel, father of general management. Henry Fuel was a French mining engineer, mining executive, author and director of mines who developed general theory of business administration that is often called Fuelism. Like his contemporary Frederick Winslow Taylor, he is widely acknowledged as a founder of modern management. In 1860, at the age of 19, Fuel started working at the mining company as a mining engineer. In 1888, he was promoted to managing director. 
During his time as director, he made changes to improve the working situations in the mines, such as allowing employees to work in teams and changing the division of labor. In the last century, organizations already had to deal with management in practice. In the early 1900s, large organizations such as production factories had to be managed too. At the time, there were only few management tools, models and methods available. During the team of his office, Henry Fiol identified five different functions of management as planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling. Even today, this is considered as the basic functions of management. He also suggested that qualities a manager must possess should be physical, moral, education, knowledge and experience. He published a book called Administration Industrially et Generale in 1917 where he explained the 14 principles of management. Today, these 14 principles are considered to be the fundamental principle of modern management. Principle of Management The 14 principles of management propounded by Henry Fiol were discussed in detail in his book General and Industrial Management and is widely considered a foundational work in classical management theory. The 14 principles of management given by him are discussed below. Division of work. Work is divided into small tasks or jobs. A trained specialist who is a competent is required to perform each job. Thus, division of work leads to specialization. According to Fiol, the intent of division of work is to produce more and better work for the same effort, authority and responsibility. According to Fiol, authority is the right to give orders and obtain obedience and responsibility is the corollary of authority. Managers require authority commensurate with their responsibility. There should be a balance between authority and responsibility. Discipline. Discipline is the obedience to organizational rules and employment, agreement which are necessary for the working of the organization. According to Fiol, discipline requires good superiors at all levels, clear and fair agreements and judicious application of penalties. Here, discipline when applied would mean that the workers and management both honour their commitments without any prejudice towards one another. Unity of command According to Fiol, there should be one and only one boss for every individual employee. If an employee gets orders from two superiors at the same time, the principle of unity of command is violated. The principle of unity of command states that each participant in a formal organization should receive orders from and be responsible to only one superior. Principle of Management Unity of Direction All the units of an organization should be moving towards the same objectives through coordinated and focused efforts. Each group of activities having the same objective must have one head and one plan. This ensures unity of action and coordination. Subordination of individual interest to general interest. The interests of an organization should take priority over the interests of any one individual employee according to Fayol. Every worker has some individual interest for working in a company. The company has got its own objectives. 
in all the situations, the interests of the group or company will supersede the interest of any one individual. Remuneration of employees The overall pay and compensation should be fair to both employees and the organization. The employees should be paid fair wages, which should give them at least a reasonable standard of living. At the same time, it should be within the paying capacity of the company. Centralization and decentralization. The concentration of decision making authority is called centralization, whereas its dispersal among more than one person is known as decentralization. The degree of centralization will depend upon the circumstances in which the company is working. In general, large organizations have more decentralization than small organizations. Scalar chain An organization consists of superiors and subordinates. The formal lines of authorities from highest to lowest ranks are known as scalar chain. According to Fiol, organizations should have a chain of authority and communication that runs from top to bottom and should be followed by managers and the subordinates. Principle of Management Order According to Fiol, people and materials must be in suitable places at appropriate time for maximum efficiency. The principle of order states that a place for everything and everyone in its her or his place. Essentially, it means orderliness. Equity Good sense and experience are needed to ensure fairness to all employees who should be treated as fairly as possible. According to Fiol, this principle emphasizes kindliness and justice in the behavior of managers towards workers. This will ensure loyalty and devotion. Stability of personnel. Employee turnover should be minimized to maintain organizational efficiency. According to Fiol, personnel should be selected and appointed after due and rigorous procedure. But once selected, they should be kept at their post or position for a minimum fixed tenure. Initiative Workers should be encouraged to develop and carry out their plans for improvements. Initiative means taking the first step with self-motivation. It is thinking out and executing the plan. It is one of the traits of an intelligent person. Initiative should be encouraged. Esprit de corps. Management should promote a team spirit of unity and harmony among employees. Management should promote teamwork, especially in large organizations, because otherwise objectives would be difficult to realize. It will also result in a loss of coordination. A manager should replace I with we in all his conversations with workers to foster team spirit. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Principles of management are general guidelines which can be used for conduct in workplaces under certain situations. They help managers to take and implement decisions. The nature of management principles can be discussed under the heads. Formed by practice, general guidelines, universal, flexible, behavioral, contingent and cause and effect relationship. Proper understanding of significance of management principles in essential to make sound decisions by managers. The significance can be discussed under the following heads. Increase in efficiency, optimum utilization of resources, scientific decision making, 
adaptation to changing environment, fulfilling social responsibilities, proper research and development, training managers and effective administration. Taylor's principles of scientific management are science, not the rule of thumb, harmony, not discord, cooperation, not individualism, maximum, not restricted output, development of each person to her or his greatest efficiency and prosperity. The techniques of scientific management as per Taylor were functional foremanship, standardization and simplification of work, fatigue study, time study, motion study and differential weight system. According to Fiol, the functions of management are to plan, to organize, to command, to coordinate and to control. The activities of an industrial undertaking could be divided into technical, commercial, financial, security, accounting and managerial. He also suggested that managers should have the following qualities physical, moral, education, knowledge and experience.